Hi, um, I'm Alfred, and I'm going to be reading the Wikipedia article for The Doom Guy. The Doom Marine, commonly known in the fan community as the Doom Guy, and referred to as the Doom Slayer in later games, is a fictional character and the protagonist in the Doom video game franchise, a first-person shooter created by id Software, and all of its sequels and spin-off media. He's a space marine dressed in green combat armor who rarely speaks on screen. Considered a symbolic and iconic protagonist and character, the original depiction of the Doom Marine does not have a defined personality and barely portrays a predefined character. According to designer John Romero, the Marine is meant to represent you, comma, the player. In 2017, Romero stated that he was the original model of the character for the cover box art. The Marine is not referred to by name in the original game. Romero described this choice as increasing player immersion. There was never a name for the Doom Marine because it's supposed to be you, the player. Tom Hall's original design draft, the Doom Bible, described several planned characters, all of whom went unused in the final version. The sole non-playable character, Buddy Decote, bore the most similarities to the game's original protagonist. Decote is an acronym for Die as a Conclusion of this episode. And Buddy was supposed to be killed by a boss at the end of the planned third episode. In the finished product, this nearly happens to the Marine in the final level of the first episode, but you continue your adventure in episode two. Later, when asked, Tom Hall and John Romero confirmed that the Doom guy is a descendant of B.J. Blaskowitz, who is the protagonist of the Wolfenstein series. Um, original series. After being ordered to fire on unarmed civilians, the Marine in Doom fatally punches his commanding officer and is transferred from Earth to Mars. He would go on to be the only survivor after battling on Phobos, Deimos, and through Hell, ultimately teleporting to Earth, where he discovers that Earth's been invaded by demons. On the box art for the original Doom, the Marine is portrayed as muscular, wearing green armor and light gray space helmet that conceals his facial features. The Marine is firing a machine gun of which doesn't make an appearance in the final game and fighting a Baron of Hell. This image, with the addition of a shotgun clutch in their left hand, is carried over the introduction screen of Doom. The player's in-game avatar, as seen in multiplayer mode, and the ending of Doom 2 Hell on Earth is based on this depiction. In multiplayer mode, the characters wear green, red, brown, and indigo. The Marine's face is seen in the game's HUD, H-U-D, heads-up display, where it's shown as a Caucasian male with light brown hair, buzz cut, and blue eyes. The Marine appears without a helmet in the cover art of, Box art, in the cover art of Doom 2 and in the ending of Ultimate Doom's Episode 4, Thy Flesh Consumed. In Doom, Doom 2, and Final Doom, the Marine expresses little emotion at the horror unfolding around him, maintaining a stern and alert glare, eyes constantly darting left and right. When he takes damage, the Marine's reaction is a mixture of pain and anger. The Marine green grins upon picking up a new weapon, and the most emotional face is when the Marine suffers 20 hit points or more taken away during a single attack, showing a shocked face. However, while its uh, software shows a generic male pictorial representation of the character for cosmetic and gameplay purposes, damage feedback, story transitions, the identity of Doom Marine is meant to represent them, uh, themselves, and so these depictions could only be considered illustrative of the character and not a depiction of what the character looks like. John Romero has been quoted as saying, for the third time this article, the Doom Marine is supposed to be you, the player. The Marine in Doom 64 is slightly less muscular, with modified green armor with black highlights, a black helmet with an antenna and blue visor. In the Wolfenstein RPG, it's hinted the Doom 64 Marine is a descendant of BJ Blazkowicz, to whom the, Marine helmet, the Marine's helmetless look in the original game bears a striking similarity. In reference to the Marine's confrontation with the Cyberdemon, when Blazkowicz defeats the Harbinger of Doom, the creature states he will return in the future to confront his descendants. In Doom 3, the Marine's appearance is similar to that of his classic Doom incarnation, as he wears green armor with exposed arms, but it's unlikely the character is meant to represent the player or the original Doom Marine. The Doom 3 Marine's facial features are not concealed, his muscular build is less exaggerated, and he has black hair. The Marine had recently arrived on Mars and is the newest member of the Marine detachment sent to the planet. His past remains a mystery, other than he holds a rank of corporal and was sent to replace one of the Marines that had mysteriously disappeared. The game begins as Sergeant Kelly begins uh, briefs him to track down a missing scientist, who warns him of the UAC dabbling into hell just a moment before the demon invasion begins. During the game, the player can interact with several characters, most of whom, like Sergeant Kelly, give the player some briefing regarding his mission. The player character remains silent throughout and is portrayed in tough and fearless in the game's cutscenes, generally only glaring at demons he sees. When he discovers the towering cyber demon for the game's final battle, however, he steps back in fear. In Doom 3, Resurrection of Evil, the protagonist is also a different Marine who remains nameless and silent as the other Marine protagonists. He's a combat engineer who is trained to operate a remote manipulation device known as the ionized plasma levitator, the Grabber. He wears dark blue armor, has a shaved head, and appears to be older than his Doom 3 counterpart, based on his heavily weathered facial features. The Marine is part of a detachment under the command of Dr. Elizabeth McNeil, sent to investigate the Mars UIC facility in the aftermath of the demon invasion. 
While investigating the ancient Martian ruins, the Marine finds and touches the Heart of Hell artifact, which releases a wave of energy that almost disintegrates the rest of his squad and opens another portal to hell underneath the UAC base. This Marine seems to be more of an anti-hero, given that he appears to derive pleasure from using the artifact, which kills almost everyone at the base. In the Doom 2 RPG, the Marine is one of three protagonists to choose from. His name is Stan Blaskowitz, uh, suggesting he's a descendant of Wolfenstein protagonist BJ Blaskowitz, like everyone else. In 2016 Doom, the, antagony, the identity of the silent protagonist referred to by Hell's forces as the Doom Slayer is ambiguous. There are several theories of his possible origins. One origin states that he's the sole surviving member of an order of paladins known as the Night Sentinels, who were tasked with protecting their home and native deities, the Wraiths, from Hell. The Doom Slayer was considered particularly, particularly special, as the Seraphim had given him the ability to grow more powerful from the destruction he caused. He has been wreaking murderous havoc on Hell and Retribution for a transgression that they made against him that is yet to be revealed. Another possible origin solicited in Quake Champions states the protagonist is the same Doom Marine from prior games. Such a story might explain why the title character still carries around the foot of his pet rabbit, Daisy, as a reminder of what he lost and why he fights. According to the Slayer's Testaments in the 2016 games, the being known as Doom Slayer has been tormenting Hell and its armies for an eternity and once wore the crown of the Night Sentinels in the First Age. He was given an Argent Energy-based exomantle of conventional design known as the Praetor Suit by a rogue demon, who was reviled by his own kind as a traitor known as the Wretch for aiding the Doom Slayer's bloody cause. Additionally, at some point, the Seraphim further enhanced the Slayer with superhuman strength and speed. Contrary to previous incarnations, this version is more vaguely characterized. The Doom Slayer has never heard seen or heard other than from the first person and other than gameplay at the beginning of the game that shows him having a caucasian skin color and the muscular masculine suit seen in the introduction practically no details are revealed however the doom slayer's eyes and nose can be made out through the visor of his helmet on the game's box art 3d model viewer and his quick champion's appearance it has also been noted for its visibly irre irreverent tone conveyed by its hand gestures uh Fist bumping a small Doom Guy figurine and a late game moment where the Doom Slayer decides to make a backup of Friendly AI rather than erasing it. The Doom Slayer, as he appeared in 2016 Doom, is present in Doom Pinball, the virtual pinball adaptation of that game developed by Zen Studios as one of the three tables of the Bethesda Pinball Pack. An add on for Zen Pinball 2, Pinball FX 2, and Pinball FX 3. It's a 3D animated figure placed on the left side of the table that fights the leaders of Demon Waves on the opposite side of the table, who are also 3D figures when the player encounters one. Table's dot matrix display also occasionally shows the face of the original Doom guy from the 93 game. Doom Slayer returns in Doom Eternal, the 2020 sequel to the 2016 Doom, in which he sets out to continue his war against the Legion of Hell as they expand their presence into various realms in the universe, including Earth, Heaven, and Phobos. In Doom Eternal, it's confirmed that the Doom Slayer is the same Doom Marine from the original games, having been brought from the world of Sentinel Prime and given unimaginable power by a rebel servant of the Khan Maker. Prior to the events of the previous Doom, his rage for the demons becomes so great he stops speaking and utters only curses and, and guttural screams that the player can hear during combat gameplay. As the story progresses, more of the Nameless Marine's time as a Night Sentinel is revealed, including how he was made one of the great warrior kings and the betrayal of his new people suffered at the, their own hands due to lies, deceit, and misguided faith. On the ravaged Earth, alien to the Hellwalker himself, his name is spoken in hushed whispers by the few surviving pockets of humanity left alive planet side. Too many months of the Ark, Armored Resource Response Coalition, he's often colloquialized as a fleeting myth passed around by lingering remnants of modern society being a one-man army who single-handedly stands alone during against the invading demons, while others amongst the now-corrupt UAC cult and seditious bureaucrats among the Ark attempt to rebuff claims of his existence and prowess on the battlefield as superfluous rumors to demoralize the resistance and anyone who hasn't yet been slaughtered by the Hordes of Doom. That's quite the run-on sentence. From his personal headquarters, Doomguy receives radio wave broadcasts from Ark Ground Sanctions detailing his exploits as an unknown savior to mankind. Succeeding in his lone crusade against the demons, where the latest cutting-edge technologies devised by the Allied Nations could not, a great many amongst the scientists seemingly praise or worship the Slayer as a vengeful war god who descended upon the broken world in man's greatest hour of need. It's decidedly vague on whether or not the Slayer has retained any humanity. While the Coalition's analysts who have examined him from within and without his tomb determine he is human from various blood samples of the subject that were taken and studied, one technician notes trace amounts of an exotic material in his genetic makeup that makes him decidedly something else. This is confirmed in his final battle with a con maker who admonishes him as a once-mortal man who dared to deny her people's way of life. 
His ascendance to a living force of nature stems from the empowerment given to him by the rogue servant of Erdak known as Summer Maker, or the Seraphim, in 2016, who used his race's technology to vastly empower him. Doom Eternal is more specific about its characterization relative to the previous episode. Doom gets seen without his helmet and in first person, and for the first time in the series' history, he also speaks voiced in flashbacks by Matthew Watterson. He again shows the streak for irreverence. A, doom in, a room in his Doom Fortress is filled with comic books, collectible figurines, guitars, and a gaming computer. Also, it's called the Doom Fortress. In the 1990s Doom novels, the main character is referred to as Flynn Fly Taggart. For the Doom 3 novels, the Marine's name is John Kane. His past is similar to the protagonist of the other Dooms, having been demoted after disobeying command to save some of his fellow Marines. He is a combat veteran of wars raging on Earth for its remaining resources, including one between the United States and Russia, because people are still mad the Cold War ended. After arriving on Mars, he was assigned to his fate as a glorified security guard. There's a citation needed. I'm not sure why. Maybe Wikipedia needs to read the article. While there, he f- befriends fellow Marines such as Maria Moreates, a Marine with a similar fate. During the Hell Invasion, Kane is forced to take command of several of the surviving Marines, despite his stripped ranking. He battles the demon single-handedly or with a few other Marines. He's depicted as passionate, uh, compassionate to his fellow survivors, working to save the child Theo, because... Space writing hasn't really evolved that much since Aliens. And to save the damned in hell. After volunteering to enter hell, they would retrieve the soul cube. Campbell is shown as very impressed by him. He and Maria begin to feel romantic ties to each other. During the end of Doom 3 Maelstrom, uh, Kane's leg is blown off, and he's admired as the man who saved Mars City. In the film adaptation of Doom, John Reaper Grimm, played by Carl Urban, is the son of UAC scientists who were killed in an accident during the early excavation of a Martian dig site. Reaper Urban... I can't believe his name. Reaper abandoned his scientific heritage. <laughs> Lamarck is just clapping his hands and joined the military to forget about the personal tragedy, eventually becoming a member of the elite rapid response tactical squad, a.k.a. STARS. Grimm, his commanding officer, Sarge, and the other members of the RRTS are dispatched to the UAC Mars facility to investigate the disappearance of several scientists, where they confront humans who have mutated into monsters after being injected with an artificial 24th chromosome. Um, we know what extra chromosomes does, guys. It's, it doesn't make people monsters. I want to get that across. That's not how it works. During the, uh, near the end of the film, Grimm... Oh, his last name's Grimm, too, huh? Grimm is fatally wounded and injected with a chromosome by his sister to save his life. Instead of becoming a monster, Grimm is granted superhuman strength, reflexes, and regenerative abilities. Such is the nature of being a protagonist. These new abilities allow him to single-handedly mow down a small horde of monsters and zombies. After killing the now-mutating Sarge, uh, Grimm leaves the base with his nearly unconscious sister in his arms. Um, The next part is guest appearances. The Marine's corpse appears in a secret area in Duke Nukem 3D. They're seen halfway through their classic Doom death animation, clutching their throat and gurgling, surrounded by various satanic iconography. Upon seeing them, Duke Nukem says, that's one doomed space marine. Subtle. Of course, I shouldn't really expect that much from Duke. In the Saturn version of Quake, the marine briefly appears at the end of the bonus feature, Dank and Scuzz. I didn't finish Quake. I don't know what this is. He's voiced by David Locke. In the Microsoft Windows version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, the Marine is a secret skater, added in by developer Gearbox Software, who ported the Windows version. This was included because Activision, publisher of Tony Hawk and Doom 3, wanted to promote the latter, which was still in development. By the way, uh, Doom Eternal Doom guy, that's why he has skateboards, because he's into Tony Hawk. Hell yeah, Pro Skater 3. In Quake 3 Arena, the Marine appears in three levels under the name Doom. He's described as six foot and weighing 180 pounds. According to the character de- description from the game the character phobos is also doom marine although his skin is darker and his armor is orange instead of green the third doom marine a woman named crash is mentioned as being doom's training instructor before arriving at the arena in rage i remember this after the first cutscene the player enters a dune buggy with a bobblehead of the marine on the dashboard the easter egg in the game's gearhead vault level is also the first room from the uh first doom game where the player can pick up a doom marine bobblehead Doom Slayer is a playable character in Quake Champions, based off the 2016 reboot of Doom, with alternate costumes based on other Doom titles, Quake the Arena and the Marine from Doom 3. In 2009, da- uh, Game Daily included the Marine on the list of 10 game heroes who fail the simple stuff for his, in- for his inability to look up and down in the original series. UGO Networks ranked the Marine fourth on its 2012 list of best-selling protagonists, noting his courage to continue in silence even when facing Hell's Army. 
2013, Complex ranked the Doom, uh, Doom Marine on number 16 on their list of gra- greatest soldiers in video games for being the original video game Space Marine and one of the classic silent protagonists. Both Crave Online and VGRC ranked the Marine as the fifth most badass male character in the video game's history. In the video game's history. Badass male character in the video game's history. But it's possessive. Okay. 2016 Incarnation of the Doom Marine has received special acclaim for its characterization and how the game presents the player character as a representation of the player playing Doom. Writing for Games Radar, Dave Houghton, 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 Lord, called the presentation incidental and not an explicit, which allows the player to immerse completely in the character. Christian Donlin, writing for Eurogamer, theorized that the guy in Doom is playing Doom and explained that the main character's impatience with the exposition is analogous to the temporary frustration of being inside Doom while not being able to play Doom. Hell yeah. In his call on extra punctuation, Ben Croshaw, we we, just call him Yahtzee, guys. I know you can't say it because it's licensed, but geez. Yeah, it says on his page, Benjamin Rickard Croshaw, better known as Yahtzee Croshaw. That's an ugly picture of him. Really, Wikipedia? I guess he's a probate guy. Oh, Lord. <laughs> in his column, Extra Punctuation, Ben Croshaw wrote that the game establishes the player character as someone who doesn't give a flake for, of dried marmite for the larger context, and only cares about ridding the planet of demons, which is hopefully representative of the player's motivation. Additional praise was given for the subtlety of Doomguy's expression. J- Jim Sterling noted that the glory kill moves, an additional piece of animation, reinforced his constant sense of irreverence. Sterling, along with a n- number of other reviewers, including Huden. Conlan and Croshaw in a zero punctuation review noted the initial moment of the game with Doomguy throwing away a communications monster as a minimalistic but effective way to convey the entire character's motivation. Um, on this list is BJ Blaskowitz and Master Chief from Halo because obviously Gordon Freeman and Duke Nukem for other obvious reasons. Samus Aran for being the actual original Space Marine even though everyone says it's the Doom guy, and the Postal Dude because whatever. Uh, and then also on the sea also is interdimensional being. Oh Lord. I'm just skimming the interdimensional being Wikipedia page in movies and TV shows. Akira. I'm guessing from the movie Akira. Yeah. Rick Sanchez. Oh, go to hell. I'm excuse me. I'm drifting. Um, that's the Wikipedia article for the Doom Guy slash Doom Marine slash the Doom Slayer. Um, thanks. 